Water on Mars. Over millions of years, water flow erosion has created many landscapes and natural phenomena we witness on the ground. The slow and continuous flow of water has such power that it can completely transform an area of the ground on long scales and move trillions of tons of matter over very long distances. On the other hand, the simple but astounding cooperation of the sun, gravity, and water can create a hydraulic cycle, which fundamentally affects the design of the ground. In this cycle, the sun's radiation causes water to evaporate, and gravity helps the water reach the ground as rain, bringing about significant changes. When geologists first saw Earth-like lows and highs on Mars, they immediately suspected that Earth wasn't the only planet in the solar system shaped by this hydraulic cycle. Flood channels and valleys on Mars indicate that water once eroded the planet's surface on a large scale. Valleys have been created between the red planet's heights by rainwater and snowmelt. Furthermore, enormous floods have passed through the gorges. That being said, next to Earth, Mars is probably another option where we could find all three forms of water on its surface. Liquid water probably still flows on Mars. It is challenging to find. Attempting to locate water on Mars has intrigued scientists for millennia. In recent decades, we have finally made progress in this field. First Observations Astronomers have been able to see the white caps at the poles of Mars since around the 17th century when the telescope was invented. This documentation showed them that Mars has at least some water in the form of ice or snow. Of course, some of these ices are dry ice or frozen carbon dioxide, yet in the 17th century, such a thing was unthinkable for astronomers. The size of these caps changes a lot with the seasons. This proved to the scientists that the amount of water at the poles was not very high, but the astronomers could not measure the exact amount. At the end of the 19th century, the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli claimed to have observed natural canals on the surface of Mars. At that time, there was no photography in astronomy, and astronomers painted their observations. Percival Lowell, the American astronomer and scientist who proposed the idea of the planet Pluto, argued that these canals were actually engineering structures built by intelligent Martians for irrigation and water supply. Scientists quickly dismissed Lowell's theory, but the doubt of whether Mars possesses a water route was not definitively answered until 1965. In 1965, the Mariner 4 spacecraft passed by Mars and transmitted images of the planet to Earth for the first time. Mariner 4 photos led scientists to believe that Mars has no water. What role did water play in the evolution of Mars? It didn't take long to talk about the presence of water on the red planet again. In 1971, the Mariner 9 spacecraft found definitive evidence of a network of small streams on Mars that ended in a large canyon. The branching and twisting layout of these rivers and streams is nearly identical to that of rivers on Earth, indicating that streams of precipitation or melting snow produced the planet's valleys. The tiny width of these rivers, less than 1.5 kilometers, the OK tributary system, and the rise in valley size as they descend downwards all point to the fact that these geological structures were formed gradually and continuously by the passage of water rather than by massive and uncommon floods. Liquid water can't stream unreservedly on Mars' surface because of its dainty environment and cold, dry temperature. As a rule, water freezes quickly, delivering ice into the climate during the sublimation cycle. As a result, the presence of valleys caused by water erosion must indicate that Mars was previously warmer and had a thick enough atmosphere to support rain. Since these valleys are located in the old heights and full of impact craters of Mars, the warm climate and the formation of the valleys must have happened in the first billion years of the birth of Mars. Flood on Mars In addition to the valleys of Mars created by permanent rivers, the planet is home to vast deep valleys, or canyons, resulting from massive and devastating floods. The largest deep valley in the solar system is Valles Marineris, which is more than 4,000 kilometers long and is located on the red planet. Unlike valleys, deep valleys have few branches and remains of gigantic floods can be seen in them. For example, scientists estimate that the flood that created the Aries Vallis Channel was a thousand times larger than the Mississippi River in the United States. Mars' deep valleys are very similar to those on the ground, 
Although the body of water is distinct, the water for these massive floods on Mars comes from breaking subterranean water layers. These waves were so powerful that they occasionally accumulated in a pit-like location between stone obstacles forming temporary lakes. The still-active Curiosity rover has explored one of these temporary lakes in Gale Crater. The data of mudstones and sands in this area show that they were brought into the lake by a water flow from 3.8 to 3.2 billion years ago. These sediments are 200 meters deep. Does Mars have a sea? In addition to rivers, floods, and lakes, Mars once had a sea. In 2004, the Farsat rover discovered that the Meridian Planum rocky terrain was once a shallow seabed with salty water. The outcrops of this area contain the mineral jarosite, formed in rocks saturated with non-flowing water and rich in sulfate. The Opportunity rover also discovered that the rocks in the area are full of spherulites, or spherical appendages formed by the formation and dissolution of minerals in water over a long period. Martian ice and glaciers. In the Martian poles, we can see the blue-white glow of ice against a backdrop of red rocks. These unique and spectacular landscapes are composed of a combination of ice and CO2. This planet's north pole has a higher ratio of water ice, while the south pole has a higher ratio of dry ice. In the winter, these caps are filled with dry ice to a depth of about a meter, which melts as the weather warms. Mars never warms enough in the summer to melt its ice. Mars's low atmospheric pressure causes these ices to sublimate. Please remember that the atmospheric pressure on Mars is only 0.6% that of Earth. So far, European and American satellites equipped with ice-penetrating imaging tools have mapped the layers of soil and rock under the polar ice. The changes in the ice caused by the climate changes of Mars in the past have left clear traces on the soil and rock of the poles, which have helped scientists to understand the past of the red planet. In addition to the poles, hills on Mars' northern plains resemble remnants of Earth's Ice Age glaciers. Deuteronilus mensae on Mars is strikingly similar to the Taylor Glacier in Antarctica on Earth. Water on Mars today. Despite these descriptions, Mars is a vast desert compared to Earth. Except for the poles, Mars's surface is drier than Earth's driest region, Chile's Atacama Desert. Until now, an enormous part of the Martian ice has been sublimated in the atmosphere. Scientists believe that a significant amount of sublimated ice from Mars entered space due to the planet's thin atmosphere and was lost forever. But the water that once flowed on the red planet has not disappeared. Many scientists believe that water underground water is trapped in polar ice, subsurface ice layers, frozen soils, and tables. For example, geological evidence suggests that large glaciers on Mars were buried over time. It is difficult to estimate the exact amount of water on Mars, and scientists must rely on limited data from satellites orbiting the planet. They express their estimates using the term geographic equivalent layer, GEL. This unit represents the depth of a planet's water if it were a single ocean. Mars generally has four primary sources of water. It is the first and littlest source of the atmosphere, only 1% of which consists of water vapor. The second source, as mentioned, is the ice sheets at the poles and polar regions. The third source is water stored under the surface. Finally, molecules chemically trapped in Mars rocks and minerals serve as a fourth groundwater. Mars rovers have thus far discovered evidence of water trapped in Martian rocks during their missions. Liquid water on Mars today. Liquid water under the surface, a layer of frozen soil called the cryosphere, is trapped and cannot escape. Scientists have estimated that the thickness of the ice sphere is 2.5 kilometers in the equatorial regions and 6.5 kilometers in the polar regions. The ice sphere contains a lot of ice, but it never becomes cold enough to freeze water. In some parts of Mars during the summer, the sun's radiation raises the surface temperature over zero degrees Celsius, and water in the frozen soil does not melt. The reason is that water on Mars behaves differently from what we see on Earth. Frozen water water on Mars turns directly into steam when exposed to intense radiation. For example, in 2008, NASA's Phoenix lander took a sample five scimitar deep from the surface of Mars, which contained white frozen soil and water. 
This ice immediately sublimated in the air and under the sunlight. But liquid water may still flow temporarily on Mars. Meteorite impacts, volcanic activity, and Martian earthquakes may create cracks in the ice sheet through which liquid water can reach the surface and flow over it. In 2010, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter encountered dark and narrow streaks with a width of 0.6 to 4.5 meters and a length of several hundreds of meters in the walls of the craters. These lines are regularly formed in spring and summer when the surface temperature is above minus 23 degrees Celsius. Scientists believe these lines are seasonal and are created when salt water from an underground aquifer reaches the surface. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter found hydrous salts in these slopes, indicating that salty water flows downstream and evaporates. How much water is there on Mars? Scientists can only measure the water from the first two sources. According to the data provided by the satellites, the entire amount of water that can be measured on Mars's surface is 30 meters, and modern satellites cannot measure the amount of water trapped in the deep soil. Scientists estimate the amount of subsurface water obliquely by analyzing the planet's geological properties. They compute the amount of water required to generate surface phenomena. According to these calculations, which are by no means definitive, Mars's GEL number ranges from 500 to 1,000 meters. However, the most prominent uncertainty about the amount of water on the red planet is related to the water in rocks and minerals. Some scientists believe that the water in this source is equal to the sum of the waters of the other three sources. But there is no certainty about this. The only possible way to estimate the amount of water in this source is to examine Martian rocks in advanced laboratories on Earth. One of the goals of the Mars rover, Persistence, and the mission to return Mars samples is to examine these minerals. Loads of evidence suggests that Mars, like Earth, supported water flow for hundreds of millions of years after its formation. Mars's water is currently mainly frozen on the surface and in the upper layers of its soil. Evidence also indicates that the subsurface water tables are locked deep within the Martian soil. These waters occasionally find their way to the surface. However, the surface of Mars today is drier than the driest areas on Earth.